now it's time to twist things up with soft pretzels. Now for my liquids, I've got a combination of water and milk. Two thirds of a cup of hot water. So what I do is pour hot, hot tap water. And then when I pour in my two thirds of a cup of milk, the temperature evens out to that ideal 110, just above body temperature. Before I weigh my dry ingredients, I'll add my butter, three tablespoons that I've melted. For the ease and for the precision, I do like weighing those dry ingredients. And that starts with six grams of yeast. And then measure 12 grams of sugar, 525 grams of all-purpose flour, and five grams of salt. Once you have it blended to a point where you really can't work it with your spoon anymore, then you turn it onto your work surface to knead by hand. You want to knead it by hand for about five minutes. When you're kneading your bread, you don't just use your hands, you put your whole body into it. I can feel I've got elasticity. You'll always want to cover your yeast doughs when they're rising. I have one that I've already let rise. And you want to give it a little more time than the bagel bites, 90 minutes. Because of that density of the dough, it just takes the yeast longer to sort of build up its volume. A beautiful dough. And now it's time to divide it. And this is where the scale comes in handy again. For this recipe, a single pretzel should be about 75 grams. Now it's pretzel time. What you want to do is first roll out each piece of dough into a long rope. Then, to get that textbook pretzel shape, create a U. Then you lift it up, twist it once, Twist it twice, and then press down. I've got my parchment-lined baking trays. What's important when you're making pretzels is not to do with the baking, but with the boiling step, you want to use coated or non-reactive baking pans because I'm going to use baking soda in the water. That could react with the aluminum and impart a metallic taste to my pretzels. There we go. A dozen beautiful pretzels. You want to let the pretzels sit for another 20 minutes. Cover them up so they don't dry out. And I have some already done. Absolutely gorgeous. Now it's time for the first cooking step. And this is traditional with soft pretzels and bagels boiling them before you bake them. That's what develops that chewy exterior and also the color that you expect, especially from a soft pretzel. I have a liter of water and I'm going to measure 50 grams of baking soda. Just like non-reactive baking trays, you want to use a non-reactive pot when you're boiling your pretzels. Whee! I like to use a spider or a slotted spoon to drop in the pretzels. And you don't want to crowd them. And you only need to boil the pretzels for 90 seconds. The finishing touch is a bit of an egg wash. Not a whole egg though, two egg yolks mixed with a couple tablespoons of water. This makes it brown beautifully and bake up gorgeously shiny. And to sprinkle with salt, it's purely a matter of taste, but you do want to use a coarse salt. These are ready for the oven. I've preheated it to 350, and they take 20 to 25 minutes. Oh, I just love 
the smell of freshly made soft pretzels. You know what else I know? I know what these soft pretzels need, a bit of mustard. Oh, they're so good freshly made. And it actually brings up a good point. When you're making homemade pretzels, you want to eat them on the day that you make them. It's that soft, tender tear, but it's got the chewiness to it. Oh, a good slathering of mustard, and I am in pretzel heaven.